If you want to hate life, then I have the perfect boss for you. Jokes aside, this is a guide on how to kill the Abyssal Sire in Old School RuneScape. The Abyssal Sire is a Slayer boss found in the Abyssal Nexus that requires 85 Slayer to kill. To kill the Sire, you must either be on an Abyssal Demon task, or actually have an Abyssal Sire task assigned to you. You are unable to kill it or even damage it if you're not on task. The Sire is primarily killed for its unsired drops at a 1 in 100 drop rate. This is actually the only unique the Sire does drop, and that's because of what you do with the unsired. Once you receive one as a drop, you can take it back to the middle of the Nexus where you come in and use it on the Font of Corruption. This will consume the unsired from your inventory and roll a drop from a table. Most commonly, you will get an Abyssal Bludgeon piece at a 1 in 2 drop rate, and you can't get any duplicates of these, so after you get 3, you can make a bludgeon and sell it for about 10 mil. Otherwise, other items you can get instead of bludgeon pieces is an Abyssal Dagger, an Abyssal Whip, Abyssal Head, the Jar for the Sire, and lastly, the Abyssal Orphan, which is the pet for the Sire. Other than the Unsired, he just has a pretty standard drop table, and you won't be making much money here in the first place. If you were to get everything on drop rate, you'd only make about 1 million GP per hour, so I would really only come here if you're pet hunting for that Abyssal Orphan, maybe you're just trying to do collection logs, or you're just bored and want to switch it up. So what would be the skill requirements to actually kill the Sire? So it does require 85 Slayer, as I said, so I would say mid 80s, maybe low 90s, you could get away with 70s. I wouldn't try it though, and especially because he doesn't give that much money in the first place, I don't know why you would be here unless you were a high level. Of course, maybe you're an iron. But I would say a mandatory 88 magic. The reason being, there's a mechanic I will show in the video, which needs ancient magic, so you'll also need desert treasure, and 88 magic gives you shadow barrage, which is the best one. Otherwise, just try to have the highest combat stats you can, but I wouldn't recommend anything below base 80s. So how do you actually get to the Abyssal Nexus to kill the Sire? As I said previously, the only way you should be going to the Nexus is via Fairy Ring. Since I have a Fairy Ring in my player own house due to my construction level, I simply bring house tabs and teleport to my house every trip I do and use the Restore Pool and then just use the Fairy Ring there, which is Fairy Ring code DIP. If you don't have a fairy ring in your house due to being maybe an Iron Man or just low construction level, you can instead use a ring of dueling so after every trip you can go to the Ferox Enclave to restore your stats. And then something you could do, I'm not sure if this is the best, you could bring an Ardoin cloak and then use that teleport as there's a fairy ring relatively close right next to that teleport so you can just get there that way every single kill. But once you actually arrive at the Nexus, you can go to any of the four corners of the room to find an Abyssal Sire, and the boss is an instant so you'll have to hop if the world is full. Now that you know the skill requirements and how to get there, I want to talk about the gear requirements. Shown on screen is a typical setup using Arclight at Sire. In the inventory will be a rain switch for phase 1 that you will see. If you have a Tumican Shadow or Sang, a magic switch might be better than ranged, but I just rock a blowpipe and it works fine. Then you're gonna see I bring a Super Combat, Ranging, Stamina, and Antidote for my potions. Then I'm gonna bring about 3-4 to four restores depending on how many kills you can get and how much damage you're taking. My rune pouch is Blood, Death, soul and air runes, but if you have a regular rune pouch which can only carry three runes, and then you're just gonna have to have a one rune in your inventory with three being in the pouch, and you need these to cast the shadow spell. I bring Telly to house tabs, because like I said, I have a fairy ring and restore pool, but if you need to bring that dueling ring instead, you can along with the Ardoin cloak, and then if you don't have the Lumbridge elites completed, you will need either a Draman or Lunar staff to actually use the fairy rings, but I don't, seeing as how I have the achievement. Then besides all of that, the rest of my inventory is just mana rays. If you're in iron, you can do sharks. Some people bring Karambwans for combo eating. I don't think this is necessary, especially because I don't take that much damage, but I guess just play around with it and see if you think you would benefit from Karamb ones as well. And then what I actually bring for the range switch is bring a top and bottom Blessed, Anguish, Blowpipe, and my Assembler. Other options you could do is of course Accumulator instead of Assembler, Black Dehide instead of Blessed, 
You could do no necklace switch and just wear a fury the whole time, or if you can't even afford that, you can try a glory, but for the weapon, I would keep the blowpipe regardless. Then for my equipped gear, a standard melee setup, slayer helmet of course, I'm wearing a fury, but bring a torture if you have it, fighter torso, obby legs, arc light, dragon defender, rada's blessing, fire cape, ferocious gloves, dragon boots, and berserker ring. Obviously, make upgrades or downgrades where you see fit. Maybe you don't have ferocious gloves, you can just wear barrows. If you can afford better gear, such as the BCP or tacits, go ahead. Primordial boots, of course, if you can afford all of this. Obby legs are only 700k, so I wouldn't really use anything worse than these. You can actually bring a barrow's chest plate, such as the Toreg's body, if you're taking a lot of damage, but I just stay with the torso for the strength bonus. In this example, I have a Arclight, which is actually the second best melee weapon to use after Tombs of a Masket came out. And if you are going to use an Arclight, you can bring a Dragon Warhammer for spec. Otherwise, you can use the spec of the Arclight, which I actually believe is better than a BGS, so just stick with the Arclight if you're using it. Like I said, Arclight isn't actually the best in slot anymore. The best weapon you can use here and what I've done all of my kills with is the Fang in combination with a Light Bearer. The damage this thing does is crazy, and the constant specs on the last phase of the fight is amazing. If you're able to afford a Fang and Lightbearer, I would absolutely bring these as I did every single kill as I said, and I would never even touch the Arc Light. Next we can talk about the actual fight of the Abyssal Sire before I show you a quick full kill with the Arc Light as well as the Fang. Coming into the room, you can see there's six tentacles in the middle of the room, with four vents being split up with two on each side. Then in the back of the room will be the Abyssal Sire, where you will start the fight. For phase 1 of the fight, you will use your highest shadow spell, so for me it's Barrage, which will put him to sleep. Depending on which one you use affects the duration, so Barrage is the best, and this is about 30 seconds. You use this time to use your range setup to destroy the vents. Typically, for me, I destroy two vents, return to the middle, knock him out again, and finish by destroying the other two. After that, you return to the middle where he will walk out from the wall, which begins phase 2 of the fight. Here, you're going to equip your melee gear and you will no longer need your range switch for the rest of the fight. If you're using an arc light, this is where you can spec him. If you have a dragon warhammer, use that, otherwise just use the arc light. But you're going to want to protect melee and piety or whatever your highest offensive prayer is. If you're using a fang, I want to say don't spec him right now, you're going to save that to the end of the fight. This part is straightforward, besides his auto attacks, there's only two attacks he can use, which is creating a poison pool beneath you, which has a chance to poison, where you simply move two tiles away, or spawning a spawn, which will turn into a skyon after a short while, which you can pretty much ignore. After you get him to half HP, so 200 out of 400, this will begin the final phase of the fight. He will walk south to the middle of the room and plant himself in the ground, and make sure to switch your prayer from melee to range. He will start spawning skyons and spawns and putting pools beneath you more often. He will no longer auto attack you and solely rely on these attacks. During this part of the fight, he will put a pool beneath you every, I think, I want to say it's every 5 ticks. So the idea here is you stand on these two marked tiles, which you can mark before you even start the fight. You hit him once, and then move so the pool doesn't spawn under you. After you get him below 140 HP, we'll begin the last part of the fight. It's still the same phase, it's just the last mechanic. He will teleport you to the southwest tile, and after two ticks, he will explode for, I believe it's about 60 damage. All you have to do is run two tiles back, which you can see I also have marked, and then all you do is continue the rest of the fight like normal. If you use a fang, this is where you're going to use all the specs. The reason being, after he uses the explosion, he will spawn up to 50. 15 spawns which turn into skyons and this is where you take a majority of the damage while killing the sire. Using the fang specs with the light bearer you can kill him extremely easy hitting high 50s almost every hit and then with the light bearer by the time you get to this phase again on your next kill you should have all of your specs back. So now I showed you the mechanics I'm just going to show you a fast forwarded um, accelerated example trip. As you see, I start in my player-owned house. Of course, you may be starting at the Ferox Enclave and the Fairy Ringing the Arduin Cloak, but I'm going to run to the southwest room. I think they're all technically the same distance. I always just run to the southwest. If you want to start off by marking these tiles, you can see them on the floor. I mark all six of these if you want to pause. Otherwise, I'm just going to start the fight by shadow barraging. I use my angler and ranging pot, and then I start killing the vents. 
You can see on the top left it's counting down when he will wake up, so if you don't get both vents it's okay. I'm pretty sure you can knock him out an infinite amount of times, so sometimes you may need to knock him out three times if your blowpipe just keeps splashing. It's happened to me before so it's not really a problem. Now that this last vent is dying, I'm going to run to this marked tile, which you should mark to. I switch to my melee setup, I pray melee piety, I dump both my arc light specs into him, and just start killing him like normal. Luckily, in this kill he didn't use any of the mechanics, but if he was to put the poison pool beneath me, I would simply move. So once I get him below 200 HP, he's going to walk to the middle of the room. I had a big hit, so he's actually at 180, but it's any HP under 200. I'm going to switch to my range prayer and immediately attack him and then move, attack, move. But as you see, I did so much damage, he's already below 140, so I'm just going to run back because I got teleported and then continue like normal. It really is this simple, and the only difference I want to show with using the Fang is this. So with the Fang, I'm going to immediately attack him, and the Fang is a 5 tick weapon, so it works perfect. I attack, move, click him, wait for the attack or XP drop. If I get teleported, I instantly run back. As soon as he opens up, I use my spec on him, and then immediately click the spec button again, because as soon as I see that XP drop go off, I can immediately go to the other yellow tile and use my other spec. Sometimes you can kill him with just 2-3 to three specs, sometimes it will take more than 4 specs and you'll need to use autos, but the Fang being a 5 tick weapon works in your favor because you can easily wait for the XP drop and then immediately move. A quick tip I want to show you, if you keep clicking on the spawns and skyons extremely frequently, what you can do is run southeast once they all spawn to this tile you see me standing on right here. This is a safe spot even though he's spawning them next to me still because I didn't wait long enough, but if you hold left shift and right click the spawns, you can make sure to select the left click option to no longer be attack so you cannot accidentally click them while trying to walk on the yellow tiles. Additionally, on this safe spot you can blood barrage if you want. Um, I don't see the point of it for me, seeing as how I just use mana rays, I don't want to run all the way back there to heal, but I would do this just on your first trip so you can make sure to mark them as walk instead of attack. And that's pretty much all you need to know about how to kill the Abyssal Sire. Make sure to check the comments for any additional tips or corrections, as you know the best way to get information is to provide it wrong and then have someone correct you. If you liked the vid, leave a like, subscribe for similar vids, and that's pretty much it, see ya.